I don't even know where to begin. What's up guys, Larry Chen here. We are at Holly Ellis Best West in Las Vegas, Nevada. Behind me, Jesse from Jesse's Performance Hello. with his most recent hot rod creation. Yep. If you looked up hot rod in the dictionary right now, yeah. I feel like it's something like this. I, I would like to think so. This is so incredible, but that's just, I don't even know where to begin. There's just so much going on. Well, I don't even know what to say. Well, okay, first of all, yes, it was such a pleasure to see your builds last time you were on the show. You know, just getting to check out your skill and right. what your fabrication skills, everything, all of it, just the whole package. Yeah. With that said, you took it to the next level with this I build. felt the pressure. I felt, man, we're gonna go out there, you know, I know we're gonna have a lot of people looking at us. I have to do a little bit better than we did last time. And I don't know, I think we did it. I think you did. Uh, so what was, what did this start life as? I don't even know what this body is. So from everything that I can tell, you know, it's a 32 Ford, a pickup truck is what it started out as. Basically, I bought it as an abandoned project. I had a buddy that was kind of building it and he just, he got tired of it and sold it to me. And um, I got it home thinking, I'm gonna do something simple, put a motor in it and just get it driving. And then I fell asleep one night and I woke up and I'm like, man, that thing's gotta be all wheel drive. You know what I'm saying? I wanna put work wheels on it because I've always had bits and pieces of certain things I wanted to do to a car. And I was like, this is gonna be the one. I'm just gonna knock it out of the park. I've never seen anything like this. Oh, this man. is just, so crazy. I mean, it's one thing to have it chopped, have it lowered, put a big motor on it, but for it to be all wheel drive. Yeah. And there's just so many things going on. This is essentially is like a tube chassis. Yep. Yeah. It's a tube chassis. So it's um, two by three frame rails. And then we did all chrome molly inch and five eighths tubing. It kind of comes from my drag racing background, you know, the light tubing and all the TIG welding and stuff. I really, you know, I wanted to incorporate all my skills on this build because my Trans Am kind of just hides its modifications very well. And I wanted this one here to like show out. Yeah, because that is a modern interpretation of that car to, to the fullest with right. all the technology, bells and whistles. Yeah. This is, I don't even know what to say. It's, it's like maybe a work of art, maybe performance art. Maybe. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of crude and loud and it's like, you know, all the aspects of a real race car, like a stock car would have, you know? And, in an old body. Okay, so is did it come like this? This did is the this patina? Is, the patina, yes. The patina was the way it was, and I didn't want to change nothing about it because it, it is well earned. And so like all of this, you obviously added these and weathered them. Yeah. To kind of make it look like it was part of it. Right. But um, what else, like this bed? The bed is the way it was. Uh huh. But okay. you added a couple. But we things. added it, yeah. We, have, we got some sponsors, we got our logo there. You know, um, obviously building a caliber of build like this as fast as we did in 45 days, we needed some financial help, you know, so we reached out to some companies we work with and even some new companies we haven't, and they really stepped up and helped us out. I love that it's tagged still and it's tagged as a truck. Yeah, yeah, that's a, and it's, it's properly registered and insured and, and roadworthy. This is just so cool though. You, you, you wanted to add a spoiler, so you weathered one. Yes. And, uh, kind of made it match the theme of the truck. This was a piece of scrap I had laying around for many, like probably four or five years now that I was always gonna do something with and then I finally, I set it up and I was like, that fits perfect, let's use that. All right, so let's talk about the engine first. All right. This is the centerpiece of this build. It is massive. I don't even know where to begin. Tell, tell us about it. So it's basically a Steve Morris LSR. It's around 500 cubic inches. It makes a thousand horsepower and 850 some foot pounds of torque. It's an aluminum block tall deck LS with Edelbrock Victor Jr. LSR heads. They're a cannon valve head. Big thing in the drift world and in like the, the TA2 world and things like that. It's a thousand horsepower naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated, 15 to one compression. What kind of fuel are you running on? Q16, Q16. We're gonna switch it to methanol when we get back. I just ran out of time. It came tuned from Steve Morris on Q16. So we just bought a drum of that and that's what we're running now. Does it? Will it make more power on meth or is it? Yeah, I could probably give it, I'd probably make around 1100 horsepower on methanol. Um, I'd give it more timing, yeah. So what does this rev out to? Right now we have the real motor set at 8,000. I mean, it'd probably safe to go to 10,000 if I wanted it to. You know, it's got 
It's got good parts in it. What did you build this for? You know, I don't have a good answer for that because, I mean, it's all-wheel drive, but it's, you know, well, it's four-wheel drive, first of all. Like, it's, it can go two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive with the front differential. It's selectable in the front with the front diff coupler. So I'll be able to do drifting, donuts, all-wheel drive cyclone stuff. I want to do maybe some road racing stuff. There's a road course right now, not too far from us. So I think it'd be cool to road course it, do maybe some street racing with it. I don't know. You know, you're, I just, you're insane. I, I want, love it. Yeah. I, I, you're, you're the best kind of insane. You're like, <laughs> you are one of us. I love it so much. And this is, this is just like this open wheel monster. That's what you've created. Yeah. And it's like no rhyme or reason for it to exist. Totally not aerodynamic. Was never meant to be. Nope. This is just the way it is. It's just so crazy. Okay, so uh, you got some huge tires on here. Yeah. 315. 315s. 315s. I don't even know if they make anything bigger than this, especially in the in NT01s. Yeah. Let's start with the wheels going in. So okay. you have some pretty cool work, very JDM wheels. Yep, yep. Um, it's my favorite wheel they ever made. And I always told myself one day, I'm gonna put them on something really cool and old just to be different, you know what I'm saying? And I found these on Facebook Marketplace. The guy was willing to deliver them. It was a really good price. They're a used wheel, it's nothing special, but he brought them to me and I basically built the car around the engine and the wheels. Why does these exist? What would they be for anyways? I have no idea. I don't, can't think. I mean, 350Z guys use them with crazy camber, maybe but, Supra guys. But with this much lip and, or, and this wide? I what? Just, I don't think I don't it know. would fit under a 350Z. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, maybe someone misordered them. It's only, you know, or it might be two wheels from two different sets. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, but they're perfect for this, I think. I think so too. Okay, and then the suspension, where did you even start with this? So basically, there's a company in Canada, FDF, they make drift parts. When doing the all wheel drive, I knew I had to have a splined hub. The only splined hub I could think of that was really what we were after was the Corvette C6 stuff. So we bought Corvette C6 drift parts, hubs, you know, angle kit, upper and lower control arms. But that's the rear hub. Well, they're, they're, they use the same hub front and rear. Oh. So they'll just leave a front open just like they do on you know, two-wheel drive trailblazers. Got it. Yeah. So we bought the FDF parts and that's what we started fabricating the front end off of. So traditionally, all of this would be underneath a Corvette. Yes. I see. Yes. Okay, and then this goes into the front diff. Front diff. What is that out of? Uh, Duramax, like a Chevy, you know, uh, 2005 Chevy Duramax diesel. And is it the same in the back? No. The back's got a nine inch in the rear. And we just match gear sets. It's got 456s front and rear. Okay, so then, okay, so you have that part. Yep. Already figured out. Yep. But then what about the cantilever setup? The cantilever actually came about in the front of this car because I couldn't figure out a different way to run the coil and not have a really tall strut tower and make it look ugly. I wasn't a fan of that. I tried Trailblazer stuff. I tried even thinking about adapting some Honda pieces, stuff like that, because the car is really light. And then I, you know, I saw I saw the video of Riley's Trans Am and how he had the cantilever stuff, and I was like, man, that just made so much sense for the room that he had. Let's try it on this here. And sure enough, it's it's just right. You watched our video on Riley's Trans Am? Absolutely. I just, I'm beside myself right now. Okay, so then, also, it's kind of cool that you maintain, is this original? That's an original grill. I got out of a scrap pile at a guy's, out of his yard, yeah. And what coolers are those for? Uh, the top one is for the transmission cooler. The bottom one is the engine oil cooler. So cantilever setup, did you guys have to figure out the math for this? Yes. In terms of? How much? Ratios and, and all that good stuff, yes. And, and basically what we ended up doing, I got with, I got a buddy named Josh, he works for Ritech. I got with them about the coilovers and the cantilever stuff and we'd sat down and did a bunch of math and we ended up just going one to one and then that way we can adjust the coil and the, and the dampening and the, and the coilover as we want. Incredible, and they're Fox shocks. Fox shocks from Ritech, yes sir. So, so cool. Okay, and then what about the steering? How did you get that to work? The steering, it actually uses a Mustang II rack and pinion, a manual rack and pinion. So it's basically what all hot rodders use. It's what this car actually came with when I got it from my buddy. And we just adapted that with some custom clevis adapters for the ends of the tie rods and custom tie rods. So be because this is all crazy drift setup, it potentially could have a lot of angle. It has a lot it, of angle. It does. It's like 70 degrees. 
Yeah. You, you could fully drift this and Absolutely. just do backwards entries. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I could do reverse entries. Yeah. That is amazing. You know, and the the main I think the main inspiration for this car was literally all the the Hunicorn videos. I mean, that car just touched me deep inside, and I was like, man, I need I need that in my life, but my version. You know. Yeah. You and the cool thing is you're not the first one to say that, right? Right. So. The first inspiration build that I had a chance to feature was Ken Block's lead mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. And the yellow he, car? Yeah. He built that. Uh, and unfortunately, that burned down to a crisp, so it doesn't exist anymore. Oh, really? I yeah. didn't know that. But with that said, he's going to build something else. Awesome. Um, but I love seeing this, you know, because hot rods traditionally are not all wheel drive. No. But you could repurpose things to make it work. So what did you do for the transfer case? So the transfer case, I did a bunch of research. The transfer case actually sits behind the cab because I wanted this thing to be low. There's a lot of all wheel drive cars being built right now that I have to sit up high because of the transfer case. It's the billet unit right here. Uh -huh. It comes from SCS. Basically they do build heavy duty like off-roading and monster truck transfer cases. And I reached out to them and they gave me, you know, they helped us out a bunch on that deal. Um, just so we would have the proper transfer case. I mean, that thing's capable of supporting 4,000 horsepower. So then that's, uh, that allows you to select all wheel drive? Or... No, no, that is a straight through. So it, oh. it runs all the time. Okay. So the, the actually the Duramax front diff has a coupler and a oh. solenoid that'll let loose one axle and it'll allow the differential, the free spin, and you can steer. And or... that's built in? From the factory. The, from the factory. Yeah. Okay. And then, so you had to figure out the electronics on that side. Yeah. I had done it one time before on a cab over build we did. We did a four wheel drive cab over that was selectable and um, it worked really well on that. So I kind of already had that in the bag, you know, that was pretty easy. Huh. So all this is doing is distributing yep. the torque front and rear or, yep. or the drive. Yep. It's 50, 50, one to one ratio. You know, I can change all that if I want to. Um, but I just wanted, I wanted to start out really simple and see what we needed. Yeah, because this is an ongoing project. You have so much, I'm sure, to develop. Yeah, absolutely. We got to, you know, we're working on the steering stuff. We keep breaking tie rods. It's just a, one of those things. We got a lot of stuff crammed in a little area. Yeah, and you got a lot of meat, too, yes. that you're moving yes, around. Yes, yes. Okay, and then it's a rear radiator setup. Yep. Because, obviously, there's just no room in the front. Yeah, and I, and, and I, I just really like the look of it. Like, in something like this here, you know, it's kind of like... You know, see a lot of it in trophy trucks and drift cars now and stuff like that. And it, it makes sense. It keeps, you know, the water behind the, you know, the passengers and stuff. So it just makes sense. And this thing stays cool. It runs at like 150 all the way here. Like, it did really good. So, hmm. but let's talk about the rear. So Ford nine inch. Ford nine inch. Like, is it locked, diff front and rear, or is it open? So the front is like an considered an open diff. That's how they come in the Duramaxes from the factory. I mean, because once you engage the four wheel drive, it'll spin both of them all the time because we'll have no slip then. Uh -huh. And then the rear has just got a posi unit, so it's like a LSD unit. So then once it is fully engaged four wheel drive, the front is completely locked? Completely locked. Yeah. Huh. Okay, because you wouldn't want it to be a, a, to have a diff. Let's say if you were going off-roading, you would want it locked anyways. Right. In, out of the Duramax. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because, you know, and if we were to just put like a, like a full-blown blocker in there, we wouldn't be able to steer this thing. Right, because it just the wheels just would not, you know, they need to turn at different speeds, mm. and it would just burr, burr, and just push itself, and it would be it wouldn't be good. Hmm. Okay, so, so then for drivability right now on yeah. the street, you have to leave it two wheel drive. No, we can put it in four wheel oh, drive. You can. Yeah, there is some slip in there, but okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, but I mean, it's easy enough just to put it in two wheel drive. You know, unless we're doing some like you know rips on the street, like racing stuff. There's just so much going on. Um, to, let's continue. The exhaust is crazy too. Did you build all of that? Yeah, we built all that in a matter of like six hours the day before we came. Um, we got with Vibrant. They sponsored all the exhaust stuff and all the plumbing on this car and they sent me two huge pallets of stuff. And yeah, that was most of it. So huh. I was going to put mufflers in it, but they didn't really work out. So I just ran it. It's all straight pipe. It sounds so good. It sounds violent is what it sounds. Yeah, I mean, it's it, a lot of compression and a lot of motor. It sounds the way this vehicle should sound from the outside yeah you know i look at it and on the way here just going through the pits you're breaking necks yeah you know people are looking at you yelling at you telling you to rev it right and it you know rightfully so this this makes music 
it makes incredible music. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 loud, but it's not like it's proper loud. I think like if you were to go to a NASCAR event, this is what it would sound like, right? If you go to any kind of big racing event, it's kind of what you hear. And that's the thing is NASCAR, generally speaking, you don't really get to hear it go on, off, on and off. Right, just, you know, wah, wah, it's more wah, just yeah. constant right. sound. But when you're driving this at slow speeds, revving it, it just sounds so good. So big uh, fuel cell here. Yep. You got a two battery setup. Is there a reason why you have two batteries? Uh, being 15 to one compression, we have a 300 amp alternator because we have the Prius steering column in this here for power steering. It's, yeah. Oh, okay. You got so, some GM parts, Toyota. Hey, uh -huh. it's a hot rod, right? Yeah, it's, it's I mean, everything, it's, 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 mishmash it's, of everything. Yeah, so, so we need, you know, that pulls 60 amps by itself when it's working. So I just wanted to make sure we had plenty of power in reserve and be able to start this thing and not worry about a jump box and all that crap. I just wanted to have plenty of reserve. Um, so did you do the rear to match the front for suspension wise or is it just to save room also? Both. Yeah, both. I wanted to have the biggest fuel cell I could have in there and have it fit properly and be underneath the bed line. So yeah, we did the cantilever back here and plus it looks proper, right? I think, you know. So you haven't really had a chance to do much of a shakedown with this then? No, we made a couple test hits in front of our building and like I broke three sets of tie rods and we've changed a couple things since then. And then, yeah, that was about it. I mean, I've been literally when I've been driving around the pits, it's because I've been adjusting the tune and emailing Steve Morris about getting some updates and stuff because they're on board helping me tune this car. Well, I mean, just before we started rolling here, you were just adjusting the lash. Oh, yeah, we were adjusting the valve lash. Yeah, that was the first time we've done it since we got the motor back together because three days before we came here, we had an oil pressure issue and we knocked out two rod bearings and a main bearing. Okay, so then did you change all of that? Yeah, we rebuilt the motor overnight. We got, I got some good friends at home. They helped us out. My good friend Ray Day, he helped me out. He came, he, he was there with me at one in the morning, taking the motor apart. And by 10 o'clock the next day, he had to crank back to me, build the motor. Hmm. I just have to take a step back and appreciate this thing. Um, the way it sits too, did you realize that it was going to be this wide? Yeah, so when I, when I built the rear end, I ordered a blank rear end that I welded my own ends on, and I propped it all up with the wheels on, you know, race ramps and stuff. And I measured how wide the front was going to be, and I just made the rear match. That way, if we go no prep racing, we got black marks. We got both the tires will get in both sets of black marks, and we'll be going. Because right now it's a complete square. Right. There's just so much. Okay, and then on top of that, the cage, all of that, just ties in. Okay, so this is the frame rail. Frame rail that you made. Right and then the cage so it goes up so yeah the frame rail yeah you can see it goes it goes down right mm -hmm. there and forward underneath the car and up and yeah and then it continues continues here all yes. the way up here and then you even have like a bash bar yes installed i originally front. set up the rear with a bash bar and i was like man we got to have something not simple you know simple not real gaudy nothing crazy you know just a simple little <laughs> nothing crazy yeah, yeah nothing crazy right it's got to flow so yeah. <laughs> just the right amount of crazy. Uh, I like these headlights too. Yeah. Where did these come from? Um, there's a local guy that parts out old cars and he had them. They're off of a Nash, like, like a 29 Nash. They're the biggest, like we went to a shop to find some headlights and they were the biggest ones. I saw them up on the shelf and was like, give me those ones. That's the ones I want. Yep. Everything else is real big and crazy. Let's just do the biggest headlights we can. Tell me about the headers. The headers, um, we built, um, when I built this car, I wanted to be able to, like, I was like, here, if we're going to send this thing, we're going to have to work on this thing. So I want to make it easy to work on. So we built the headers so we could get to the spark plugs easy, so we could get the valve covers off easy, to where we could get the headers off easy. You know, um, my my lead fabricator, uh, Justin, him and I stayed late one night, and, you know, I helped him kind of mock them up, and he welded them out. And Yeah, uh, because if, if, if it was something where it's just i mean this is aesthetically pleasing also right but if it was as short as possible it would be a lot harder to work on potentially yeah that and we didn't want to take away from the motor right that's why we got big long primaries they're all equal lengths about 26 inches in length we did a lot of math on that um, which rat rod guys don't normally do right they don't usually take that into consideration but we didn't want to lose anything in the motor you, you so you say rat rod there's really nothing ratty about this car except for just the stuff that you decided to leave right which is fine you know it, it it adds to it you know all of it the patina everything you guys did such a good job this is really interesting to me um 
this CV set up here. Yeah. So where is this even from? What is this from? So these are drive shaft shop axles that we had custom made. We used the Grand Sport 33 spline hubs, Corvette hubs, and then they just built us these axles. They're like, I think they're like 934 or 933 Porsche pieces that they built for us. And then, oh. and then up the street from me, I have a, I have a buddy that owns he's a fabrication shop and he machined these custom adapters for us out of billet aluminum. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this where it's this, where you can't even see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. just rubber on rubber. Right. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, you know, the joke is, is that's my love life summed up right there, you know? So it's just. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so good. This is just so crazy in every way. Oh my God. I, I just keep wanting to step back because there's just so many little things and I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, let's talk about the interior. Okay. How does this side open? So basically, one of the things we kept from the other builder is these gate latches. Uh-huh. So it's, oh, okay. it's literally just a gate latch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So. Yeah. But this door, all original. All original. No glass in it. No glass in it. I might put some windows in it with like some, you know, snap strips or something like the, you know, the drift guys and the road race guys are doing now, but we were on such crunch time and we built this thing in 45 days. Like, well, the thing is you've been telling me about this build because you've probably had it in your head, Yeah. but you didn't actually, um, start executing it until right. So last minute. late January, I bought the car. Right. And I think that's when I kind of sent some ideas your way. And then we had to wait you know, six weeks on a transfer case, just even, I couldn't build anything without having the parts there because I didn't want to build myself into a corner. So I kind of had to have all the parts, you know, we had, you know, it wasn't until I think early March we got the motor. I mean, it was just, so we like really crammed things together all at the end there. Um, this transmission is insane. And I love the fact that it's just sitting here. <laughs> yeah, that's another part of my drag racing background that I really thought would be cool in this build is, you know, we, we built the floors to be completely removable. And like the pedal system is so tight with adding a clutch pedal in here that we really didn't have room to make a trans tunnel. So I was like, well, let's just leave it exposed. The bell housing and the clutch and everything's on the outside of the firewall. So, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty safe in that sense. And um, it's a fully built T56 Magnum, um, S1 sequential shifter. It's got a triple disc, uh, like a road race clutch, real small, like six and a half inch clutch. So that's why it revs really fast and, you know. You do have something, like a cage here protecting the drive shaft. Yeah, if the drive shaft lets go, you know, I don't want to take my arm off. Uh, so we did take a lot of safety, you know what I'm saying? It's got double double main hoop roll bar and, you know, we redid the whole cage. This would, this would be like, you know, NHRA spec if I wanted to, you know, it's, it's to that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is removable too. Fully removable to. door bar, A, so you could get in easy if you had trouble getting in if you're a bigger guy, and B, to work on this thing. There's just so much, even like the throttle is so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes up here. Yeah. And then and then there's then like linkage There's here. a pivot point here and then a solid rod goes out the front. Huh. Yeah. And it's all, it's all just. Oh, so it works like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it pulls this rod. Ah. Yeah. The clearance is so tight and then you have an e-brake handle. Yeah. So we didn't, I don't have that hooked up quite yet, but I do have, yeah, we're, I do want it to have an e-brake in the back. So like I said, I want to drift this thing. I really do wholeheartedly want to drift this thing. So that's going to be a major part of getting this long wheelbase to drift. Holly EFI dash. I love that this takes up so much of your view because this is chopped so much. How many inches is this chopped? I don't know. I think it's, it's almost like 10 inches, I think. I mean, yeah, it's ridiculous. Like it's, it's like my wife sits in the passenger seat. She can't even see over the dash. Yeah. You know, she can't see nothing. So it's like, like driving a train. Right. Yeah, you got, yeah. <laughs> you can't yep. even see anything. Yeah. But I think it's all part of the experience, right? And the window still flaps open. So like that's our, you know, mm. that's our air conditioning. You can get all the smells and everything and, you know. The smells, the yeah. heat from the transmission. Yes, yes. I, I love that it's a manual too. I it think that's so cool. It had to be. I, I just, mean, you can clutch kick this thing. You can drive this thing. Hard. All right. Yeah, absolutely. And that was very, very important for me because I like manual cars. I love that there's still wood in this body. 
I didn't want to lose the feel of like it being an old car, right? I didn't want to take all that. Out. I didn't want to paint in here. I didn't want to do any of that. Like that's the I, original wood framing of the car. I mean, this, this wood is whatever, what, 90 years old now? Almost, yeah, almost 100 years old, yeah. 90 <laughs> years old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy to think about? <laughs> I, I think that's insane. And it's still got like part of the rubber or the, the fabric seals and stuff. Uh-huh. Which oh, was yeah. A, yeah. We had a piece of it catch on fire over here when we wasn't the cage up. It was crazy because it smelled bad. It's probably asbestos in there, so. Huh. Probably, <laughs> probably not a good idea. Good, <laughs> probably not a good idea for me to rub my eyes after touching that. Yeah, I wouldn't lick your fingers or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. Okay, so in this, the Holly, um, what is this? Dominator. Okay, the Dominator system just mounted front and center yeah part of it is that there's just no room for anything else and huh? we could have made room underneath and stuff right but in the in the sense of it i really like it to be exposed like this here because nascar has all their ignition boxes exposed and stuff because so they can work on them right and I, I just took a lot of that into you know when i designed all this i wanted it to be easy to work on you know i mean we got four zeus fasteners the whole dash will come out so if we need to work behind there we can i really like that concept so much because a lot of people don't understand um, when they watch this versus that, when they watch Jim Connor, and when they watch Ken drive the unicorn, yeah, they think, oh man, that car is so fast, whatever, you know, all that. That vehicle was built for filming. Right. It was built for Jim Connor. Right. It was built to slide. And if you look at the construction of that vehicle, so much of it is so you can mount cameras anywhere. Right. So you can, um, you know, it has the durability, it has the endurance to do all this stuff yeah. for filming. You know, right. so initially when we filmed Jim Connor Seven, um, we we filmed for whatever five days I think in LA. No problems, really. Maybe bent a drive shaft or something. Like, right. But but the point is that it was designed just for that purpose. Right. And whereas you designed this for it to be easy to work on, but still perform right. and just look crazy and on top of that kind of put your name on the map again i just hope one day that i can have the endurance and the in the the level of rigidity that the unicorn has because you know it's it's easy to send something like that one time and have it just be a crumpled up pile of crap you know but like to just sand and sand and sand and sand and like i mean i've seen blooper videos that thing running the curb and stuff and that thing just they just change the wheel and put a new tire on it and yeah. just get back to filming. It is pretty crazy. I mean, one of the things that people don't see when they watch this versus that, they think, oh, it's cool that it, you know, raced this crazy, um, whatever, against a drag car or anything, um, and it was able to win or it was close, whatever. What they don't see is that we film like six episodes of those a day, and it's repeated passes, yeah. just punishment, yeah. you know? and. Uh, you you look at the body and it's just like all the arrow everything is just barely holding together because it was never meant to go over triple digit speeds like that right you know so it is it's pretty cool to see but with that said you know it's a performer and hopefully this is just that it it performs as crazy as it looks um should we take it for a ride if you want to i'm i'm okay with it but yeah are, are you cool with it i'm cool with it you know me i don't I don't shy away from much. Yeah, I mean, you took me for a ride in your build last year, and I was just blown away at how fast the thing accelerates. Yeah. This has got to be even crazier because I will drive. Right. <sighs> Amazing. But Jesse, man, you always, you, you just, you, you never disappoint. This thing is just unbelievable. I don't even know, I, I, I don't want to say I'm looking forward to what's next because this needs to live its life. Right. And you need to do, develop this. And this is just like its its debut. Right. Right. So so this has a lot more room to grow. And I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be so good. I already but, got yeah. some ideas in the works of, you know, improvements and things like, you know, um, like I said, it's more, you know, it's crazy enough. I just want to bring the durability to it. You know, and that's that's what's going to be the harder task, I think. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're gonna get some more pictures of it. I'm gonna take a ride in this thing and uh, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun, but thank you guys for watching. Yeah, this is just so crazy. I'll, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Um, I love the hidden Texas flag here. Yeah. Because um, 
Jesse, you're, you're from the Fort Worth area? Fort Worth, Texas, yes, sir. And uh, yeah, you got this subtle flag as the firewall right there. Cool. Yeah, I love this too. This is a cool detail that I didn't really get to talk about. It's, um, I mean, not only is it functional because I know this chassis has so much vibration for these lines, but um, it, it kind of looks like a like an old. What are you saying? Like, like a, a moonshine steel, the way the key, you know the the copper tubing's coiled up and stuff. Yeah, just one of those like little features that I wanted to do. Yeah. So this color that you chose. Yeah. Is that to kind of represent or almost copy the rust a little bit? A little bit. I, I didn't want to do any major contrasting color. I'd rather it just kind of look, you know, like it's in place, part of the car. And then that color actually came about because Bear gave us the brakes. Oh. And they did like the, I think it's called Arizona Copper. Mm -hmm. And so we had our local powder coater, um, powder coat, you know, as close as you could to match that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. All righty. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, yep. I'm listening. Before, uh, before we just started rolling right now, Jesse asked me what's the craziest thing I've ridden in. I mean, this is this is this is up there. Dude. Is it? This is up. There. Look I'm at this thing. The transmission's right there. Oh my God! It sounds insane. I think it's just the right amount of sketch. Yeah. What is this? It is something else. Oh my God. Wow. There is no room in this. Once you're in, you're in. That's it. I don't, we haven't even tested those seat belts. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you feel safe? Yeah. All right. It's pretty tight. It's pretty tight in here. Hang I'm hanging on. I'm going to hang on. Make sure that latch is good. Oh, I it's, you it's, know? You know? It's like a carnival <laughs> ride. It's like a carnival ride, right? You're like, man. Oh I'm my god, your seating position's insane! You like it? Holy I, crap! It's blind spot central. Yo! Stupid thing.
do you think? What do I think? What do you think? This is the first time you're driving That's it. That's the first time I ever sent it like that. Well, we made it back. It's not broken. And it drifts. This thing is a drifting monster. I'm not, like, I wasn't ready for the first couple spin arounds, but I got it now. This thing's crazy. What what are you what are you feeling right now? Are you are you? I don't even know what to ask. Like what I don't are you even feeling? know. I don't even know. Like uh, is this over, what you wanted? Yes. Yes. I'm overwhelmed with excitement because it worked. Yeah. 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 I would say so. Yeah. yeah. So it's a couple of things I noticed. Yeah. The steering wheel is huge. Yes. And it, it, you're like so busy <laughs> yes. keeping that thing straight, and oh. on top of that, the door unlatching. The door came unlatched as I was ripping donuts. <laughs> Yes, and I love that he's he's holding on and still going committed and then holding the door and just full throttle. We sent Th it. This is um it's a different experience. I have to tell you. Yeah, you take a victory drink yeah. right there. Yeah. You deserve that dude. Okay, I have to tell you, something happened to me that I feel like has never happened to me riding in a car. Like I just got the shutters, like my we whole need, body. We need some clean underwear for yeah, Larry. Well, no, no, it, it's almost like a, a overwhelming sensation, you know, because it's like I shuddered like I was cold, like, ugh, you know, yeah, you I had to like shivers, get it out. Yeah. yeah. And then on top of that, when you started doing the donut and when you pulled out of it, I got so much vertigo just from that forward and side G load yeah. at the same time. Oh, it's move, It's spinning with motivation. Yeah. There's a lot of motivation there. So the question is, I'm wondering how it will slide with all four wheels spinning. It slide. okay, so it hooks better, actually hooks better in two wheel drive. Really? Yeah, because what happens was, I've noticed it just now, I spun it like that one time in four wheel drive, and it spun way easier. And it's because what happens is it unloads the front suspension, allows those to go, and since it's direct drive, it makes his rear spin too. You know what I'm saying? Because it has no choice but to spin. Because the fronts are spinning, it's all going together. So, um, so this thing is nasty. It is. It's, how much do you think this thing weighs? We scaled it at about 2,500 pounds. 1,000 horsepower, 2,500 pounds. Yeah. That's 2.5. Horsepower to weight ratio, right? That's, that's I wasn't crazy. ready for this, dude. No? I, I wasn't. Oh. I, I'm, I'm thoroughly blown away. I'm so excited. It's crazy. You could feel so much heat oh, yeah. coming from here. And the noise and, and the, the, and noise. the smoke and dirt. And it's it's, it's, this it's is so like, rowdy. And you're, the transmission, I'm sure it's something that you have to get used to, too. Absolutely. This is the first sequential. And it's a clutch sequential, right? It's just a sequential adapter. So I have to use the clutch too. So that's why a couple times I missed the gear and stuff. Cause I'm pulling it halfway and I feel it stop. I gotta pull it all the way and push it all the so way. What is this revving out to? Cause you hit rev limiter so fast. 8,000. 8,000. I mean, with the first gear, this first gear is useless. Useless, start. yeah. You just, blow it off like you're. You, you would I, think that it's not in gear is how fast it, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, like right. there's it, no load. It's like you're in neutral and you're revving it. That's yeah. what it feels like when you're yeah. in first gear. And second gear ain't far behind that. Yeah, because I noticed when you did the initial roll yeah. in first, you just hit it and it just went, brrr, brrr, you know, yeah. like it just hit rev limiter and you just shifted to second right away. Yeah, and I was anticipating that, so that was that turned out good. But yeah, this thing, it's going to take a lot of getting. Once we get the power steering hooked up, it's going to be very, very helpful. For, for something that hasn't been shaken down and we just shook it down just now. That was now, the shakedown. Uh, I'm just, I, I can't wait to see it in the burn, burnout box. I think it'll be great. Yeah. yeah. And I have a line lock. Oh, wow. Okay. We'll be there for sure, bud. Thank you so much, yeah. Jesse. This has been overwhelming and um, there's no other way to put it. But uh, awesome. thanks for bringing it to Ellis Fest. Awesome. Actually, what we want to do is we would love to visit you in Texas sometime. Come soon. on. Yeah. Come on. We'll be it. there. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go.